Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are uh, rejoining the crew of the Perseus 1 and the uh, lunar lander uh, here in orbit of the moon. We are just uh, trying to make our rendezvous with Tremonia Station. We've got a node plotted to uh, lower our orbit. That is uh, 610 meters per second. Um, there's RCS control. Fantastic. Uh, I guess, yeah, there's no more thruster fuel left in this. Uh, we'll worry... Uh, a little bit of aerosene, but no nitrogen tetroxide. We will worry about all of that after uh, we've got our closest uh, approach, close encounter thing. There's Earth. Um, based on that moon should be... There it is. All right, so let's just go ahead and time warp in and uh, lower our orbit now that we are uh, orbiting around the moon in the same direction as Tremonia Station. Got about a day to kill. Uh, they've got plenty of life support now that they rendezvoused. I did transfer life support uh, into the lander itself. Uh, so we shouldn't have any problems should we separate those two. Just to be fair. Two hours. What am I doing? Time warping. Time warping is what I'm doing. Just uh, not particularly well. Because, man, look at that view. Wow. All right, about five minutes out, so we'll... Uh, for one, verify that we are controlling from here. Good. Apologies, engines, just a bit. Our engine, singular. Good light. Yeah, we're a little ahead of schedule. Shouldn't be a problem, we hope, anyway. Certainly not that the fuel budget for this mission is becoming increasingly tight. Uh, that was me just uh, checking resources. We do have some reserve aerosene and N2O uh, in the uh, command pod, typically reserved for landing maneuvers. Uh, quick shutdown of the engine because we were way too close and a venting of uh, excess waste supplies, which I should have done before even starting this burn to begin with, as it uh, might have saved us, I don't know, three or four meters per second something around those lines. It's not a whole lot, but uh, every little penny counts. It is really, really going to come down to the wire on a lot of this. There is our uh, initial circularization burn, and now we just need to uh, wait a little bit for our orbits to uh, line up just a bit, and then we can get a pretty good-looking intercept there in uh, just a little while's time. Thankfully, they didn't have to sit in orbit for another million years. Uh, one minute out from the burn, we will just go ahead and transfer the excess fuel from the command pod uh, into the main service tank so that it can be used by the engine before we uh, make our raw rendezvous uh, burn. And uh, now we've got a 57 meter per second correction to uh, zero out our relative velocity with Tremonia Station. Uh, still waiting for it to make its approach. It has not yet entered render range. And uh, still kind of looking for it. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Uh, because the frame rate is terrible. There she is. Good to see you again. So we'll just uh, zero out what we can. 63 meters per second left in this. And we have to separate these two, th uh, these two spacecraft in order to dock anything. Which, because uh, we've only got the two docking ports. One for each. So first we will transfer all of the fuel into the lander. Uh, I have a plan here. It's not a very good one, but uh, it's it's kind of where we are at entirely. Uh, we will jump Val from the command pod over to the lander and undock it from Perseus. Make sure we can reset our target. We are basically just going to leave Perseus adrift here. Uh, dock the lander to Tremonia Station, uh, collect a bunch of fuel, jump back out, refuel Perseus, and then take both craft back to Tremonia Station for another hard dock. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, two. That's four dockings we're going to do in this episode. Aren't you excited? I know, because I'm so good at docking things. Uh, in an effort to save RCS fuel, we just uh, turned stability and RCS off. For a while, as we made our approach to the station, uh, no point in SAS burning a whole bunch of fuel as I'm just letting it do right now. But um, 298 meters per second is well more than we would need to actually do a docking. But yeah, it's 
same amount of fuel, 63 meters per second for both craft, 300 meters per second for just this one. It is considerably lighter than the Perseus. And now we'll just uh, zero out our velocity. I figured just on a hunch, the only place we'd be able to actually dock this is on the uh, shuttle docking extension. Um, pretty much right there in front of us now. It is approximately close to that solar panel, which does worry me. This is a whole lot wider than the uh, docking approach we have from uh, either shuttle or, or Artemis or Perseus for that matter. So it is going to be uh, just a little bit of a struggle trying to orient the solar panel so as to not hit the array and bump. It does not look like it's making contact here, but it actually is uh, bumping up against that solar panel array, which is super, super frustrating, especially when you've got what looks like a very solid approach, uh, causing us to back off again. I just had to verify because it really looks like it should clear, but it's not. So we will jump Val out because there's no one on board Tremonia to uh, actuate any controls, and she will just manually collapse the panel and get it out of the way, seeing as how time and fuel uh, is burning. We need to get some things done, but with quick work made of that, she will jump back into the lander, reorient herself uh, again slowly, and uh, try again to make a solid docking approach now that she's drifted very far off target. Uh, and now with the solar panel out of the way, all clearance issues are resolved. And she can just ease it very slowly on ahead. I tried this uh, extend the docking bumper thing. Uh, it worked pretty well for our Mars reloading system. Not so well here, however. Hooha! Alright, finally! <laughs> and we have a place to put all of this extra fuel. I mean, eventually it's going to take many seconds for a right click to get recognized. And we have to do it a bunch. But uh, I think we're going to dispose of that drive unit. Um, just as soon as we've mostly emptied it. That will be our first step. And just uh, getting things cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, we'll stop it there. 264, our number to go with. Oh man, fuel transfers take even longer. <laughs> oh boy. I don't know what it is exactly, but something here is definitely making our frame rate suffer, and it is mildly frustrating. All right, we'll pin these two tanks open. Oh, come on. Like, I have to double-click for anything to actually happen. I don't know why this thing is so obstinately slow. Now we're going to get somewhere. It will just take uh, at least four times as long as it normally would. But uh, we do have uh, fuel being transferred from the station uh, into the lander itself. We don't need a whole lot, but we do need to make sure that we uh, transfer out enough to go out and meet with Perseus, dock, dump some fuel onto Perseus so that it can come out and dock, and then return the lander also to dock. So one docking down, three dockings left to go. So we will set our target. Perseus has been uh, drifting ever closer ever since we left, which is nice. That uh, means less time it's going to take us to get there, but it is pretty much dead in the water. Um, our engineer is still on board the lander, so we actually have no crew in there and no ability to control it or do anything with it. Not that it has any fuel on board to actuate uh, the RCS system, but... So it's, uh, it's going to be a, a dead docking where we can't maneuver the target to meet up with us. So we'll have to uh, come around the nose, pretty much just like we did uh, on Ascent from the Moon last episode. And then uh, zero out some of this velocity uh, as best we can. I, of course, was getting a little impatient and having to do this in basically frame-by-frame -frame mode was kind of starting to wear me a little thin. But we will try to zero out as much as we can here, about 28 meters uh, off the bow, and then uh, make our turn in, get ourselves angled to the docking port, eventually anyway, and then uh, start to make our approach. 
nice and easy. Uh, of course, nothing ever really goes all that easily. But slow and steady, we'll save the fuel. Uh, although we did come in just a little bit hot, nudge the ports together. There's hard dock. Excellent. And now we can uh, transfer a bunch of fuel into the very thirsty uh, Perseus. That uh, should be more well than enough. So we'll just uh, make sure we can angle ourselves in. Oh no, we left the engineer aboard Perseus. That's right. She's just in the lower cabin section of Perseus, not of the lander. This is just Val. Now Val is going to uh, take the lander back to Tremonia Station and park it in the same spot she just left. Two of three dockings done. Uh, we have no SAS uh, since we don't have a trained pilot aboard. But uh, we can move some fuel around and get those top thrusters at the top of the command pod working and at least uh, try to zero some things out. Looks like that docking nudged us away, so she'll make a quick burn on the thrusters to get us at least drifting back towards Tremonia instead of away. Uh, that would just make Val's life a whole lot easier. He's going to zero out that velocity, and of course, making a turn is uh, nigh impossible without adjusting things, but Tremonia is also now rotating. We were uh, a little rough on our initial docking, which has left a resonant spin. You can see uh, pretty clearly here in sped up footage, which uh, makes getting a solid lock onto this port a little more difficult than it had any right to be. Yeah, a little bit of angle here, a little bit of angle there, docked. Now Val will just jump out on EVA since it's uh, not really worth hanging around or doing any of these other weird things and uh, take a trip on over to Perseus, who also has a very nice spin going on thanks to no qualified pilot being aboard. No problem for her though. She will jump into the command pod and uh, re-angle Perseus onto Tremonia Station and uh, make some adjustments on the RCS. 395 meters per second in the tanks now, which is many, many times more than we would ever need for a docking, but taking it nice and slow, still the order of the day. We will just uh, shift some fuel forward so that we can get a little bit better balance across this RCS, um, hopefully which will make turning not be so lopsidey or weird, things like that. And now setting one of the opposite docking port as target. Uh, I've never actually docked this model this of spacecraft to Tremonia Station. I think we had one Artemis 1, maybe an Artemis 2 during its initial test phases. And then everything after that has been shuttles, which all docked on the uh, docking extender. So this will be the first time we've actually been able to park a spacecraft to one of these uh, inner docking ports. And I'm really not sure it'll fit. So we're going to have uh, one of those solar panels retracted just to make sure we can now bounce signal to the station. Which is good. We are no longer obstructed by the moon and we can issue commands to the space station as necessary. Now, I think we've got ourselves almost lined up. We are probably going to need some kind of lateral translation. Uh, not a big deal, however. It just uh, takes me a little while to figure out the controls. There was probably about a half second delay between when you hit the key and when something actually happens, which uh, made trying to do precise maneuvering a uh, more frustrating than interesting. But uh, thankfully, I've spared you all of that and uh, my long strings of uh, unfriendly words as to how exactly this docking was going to go. Uh, still a little bit of uh, unarrested spin on Tremonia Station means uh, getting onto that port is a little difficult, but we'll just pivot it in and dock. Holy hell. Finally docked. <laughs> Finally all the bits are here. And we can actually get rid of this thing, provided, of course, it will ever do anything about it. Undock. RCS. Stability control. Back us away. Oh, I have to unlock your fuel, don't I? Back us away.
you know, whatever does it for you. Okay, good. That tank's empty. I did not screw that all up. Let's take a quick save. Just a tiny one. And we'll get this angled into retrograde. Fire that engine and be done with this uh, capture stage. It was very nice. It served its role very well. It's uh, a little oversized, but you know what? We needed it. So, you know, there's that. Push into the retrograde vector. Make sure we're not going to clip into anything. No, we look uh, solidly clear in a way. Oh, what a view. That's a good one. All right. Now that we're clear, let's go ahead and uh, make sure this is active. Oh, come on, let me click on something. All right, good. It is active. Ullage, 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 ignition. It's lit. That's definitely a collision course. We'll just go ahead and let it burn out. Takes a while when you're in render range of something ridiculous. All right, we're just gonna shut it down. 66 meters per second isn't gonna matter much. And now time for research transfer, of course. Uh, I will do all of that off screen. So uh, that's gonna do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.